Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you for joining me once again today, and welcome back to the Joman campaign. Now, um, this is pretty much where we left off last time. I have made a couple of extra moves moving scouts around and such, including one that probably won't work out, but it might. And at the very least, it might be interesting. What I've done is I've taken Akihito, this ninja here, and I'm sending him into Midgard's capital. Because Midgard's capital is where A... Uh, the mages are going to be, and B, it's where his god is. Now, Midgard's god is a great sage, and great sages are not physically imposing. Uh, they're comparable to celestial bureaucrats, which is what General Confusion's human form is, and you may notice um, it's not impressive. Low hit points, low attack and defense skill, okay combat speed. The only thing that's impressive about this is the magic, and of course the celestial bureaucrat can shape change into a dragon, but the uh, great sages can't do that. So given that, it's actually theoretically possible that Akihito could sneak into the enemy capital and assassinate their god, which would be A, hilarious, and B, a huge blow to Midgard's power, uh, and would make fighting them much, much easier. So I thought it might be worth a try. Uh, over here, Hirofumi and his unequaled obesity uh, he has, has been counteracted somewhat by a never-healing wound, but it still gives him two extra hit points, which is kind of hilarious. And more importantly, it gives him two extra points of strength. So, Hirofumi, if I recall correctly, yes, killed a mounted commander last turn. He's going to assassinate again. This army is moving down to pick up a whole bunch more troops. We are researching heavily, and we have our first Ryujin. Now, as I've said before, he can't actually construct anything terribly, terribly useful right at the moment. Um, Trample actually wouldn't be too terribly bad for him, but he can't wear shoes in dragon form. Uh, let's swap him back to human form. In human form, he does have full slots, although one of his miscellaneous slots is taken up by his pearl. But... Mm, I don't know what we want him to do just yet. What I actually want him to do with his uh, earth magic... Do I have another two earth? I do have another two earth in Chome. So what two earth mages can do is, I talked about this last time, they can forge earth boots which buff earth magic, and then they can forge dwarven hammers. Uh, you, with air magic, there might be some air items that I can forge that would be useful. Uh, there are actually some air items that could be good. I don't want to do a huge amount of forging right now, but Eye Shield is actually a really good thugging item because if you hit someone with an Eye Shield, uh, then you have to make a magic resistance roll against 12, which is higher than average magic resistance, and if you fail, you lose an eye. Um, or you get blinded, I believe, actually. Shield of Valor, I used those in the last uh, game as, as Fomoria. I almost said Niflheim, which was not correct. Uh, and they were pretty useful. Uh, I'm getting up to my construction at level 2 is now at the point where I can make some items that are useful. Uh, I cannot yet make the the really good items. I need to get at least level 4 for that. However, I can make owl quills. They cost air gems. I don't have a huge number of air gems. However, they are decent research boosters. So that is something I might consider. Uh, my gem income, however, is not impressive. I desperately, desperately need more gems. So, one thing that I may do here is take some more mages out to search for magic sites. Masatsuna can search. In particular, I'm going to grab an air mage. I don't have any two air mages, which is unfortunate, but, you know, not unexpected. Um, let me take Kimimichi out to search for sites, because he can search for air, which hasn't been searched for yet. Um... I really wish I had a one air and two earth mage so that I could search for more earth sites. Uh, let's get Kyofusa searching as well. So those two are going to move around and search for magic sites. Because with they can look for higher level nature sites and higher level earth sites and they can look for level one air sites. I really, really want more air income because a lot of useful items are air magic based. 
I have 190 extra gold. I am recruiting mages from this province as well at this point. Um, I can actually recruit Omiyoji from here as well. So I may start doing that. But they take four commander points and Master Shugenjas only take two. Hmm. I'm upgrading this fortress, which will take a couple turns. So what I might do is I might just keep recruiting ninjas for now. Yeah, let's get a couple more ninjas out. And then, ideally, I would also like to get another fortress somewhere else. Like up here, maybe. Because it's only in mountains where I can recruit my wizards. That waterfall's a nice sight. I might put another fortress up here, maybe? Has a ton of resources. I don't have to worry about resources too much, because this scraw point already has more than enough resources. Oh, right, I'm building another fortress in Amir Amirodon. Duh. Okay, it's time for the next turn. Alright, so no sights. Uh, my dead prophet's power has left the world, so I can now recruit another one. Our undefended province of Witch's Cops has been conquered by the enemy. Interesting. Uh, I tried to assassinate a mounted commander and succeeded. I tried to assassinate another mounted commander and succeeded. Good. Battle in Waywoods. So Raga attacked Lemuria and lost. Now this is interesting. See these Toran Shahs here? Lemuria captured a Toran Shah. And I'm not sure how they did it. There must be a spell involved. Uh, the army was basically wiped out. Uh, these apparitions, which are plague carriers and ethereal, and dispossessed spirits, which are ethereal, they're all very, very, very hard to kill. So let's view this battle and see how that Turan Shah got flipped. Do so you see the Turan forces down here? Skeletal body, unholy protection, blessing. There's the Shah. Casting more unholy blessings. The ethereal units are leading the charge, and as such, they are kind of sucking up the majority of the uh, arrow fire. Purifying water, frighten. Plague Spittle is casting... Oh, Apostasy. So Apostasy is the spell that I'm thinking of. It must have been lucky. Well, Magic Resistance is only 10, actually, so not all that lucky. Plague Spittle is preparing to cast Apostasy again. And there they cast it. I think, but I don't think it hit anybody. So you can see the disease spreading around these guys. And the Turin Cavalry are indeed diseased. Now the fighting is happening. And... Has that Turin Shaw been apostatized yet? I'm not sure if he's actually switched sides. Yep, he has. You can see he's attacking his own troops there. So he was captured with apostasy and became a reanimator priest. That's the sign, because reanimator priest is an ability that only uh, Lemurian priests and other undead nations have. Lemuria's bless, interestingly, is in vulnerability, combat speed up, undead leadership, and a couple of pretty high level resistances. So Lemuria's god is clearly a rainbow who has a whole bunch of magic powers. Okay, well, that's unfortunate. In Hinefe, uh, Midgard sent in a small mercenary force, which took out my province defense. Not too unexpected. In Viveros, we conquered uh, this province against a force including heavy cavalry and vans. I lost four Akaonis, but the Vans, despite their generally very superior combat stats, only managed to kill two. And then a heavy cavalry got one on the charge. And we lost Witch's Cops. There was a battle in Narion Sea. Ah, uh, one Shark Warrior had retreated into this province, and they sent their surviving troops down and took the province away. And we lost the Shark Warrior. In Amiridon, uh, we lost 320 population, found some nature gems, uh, got some negative scales, and got some unrest. Okay, so not a great turn overall, but survivable. Down here, Shoichi has got some troops. We are recruiting more Ryujins and more Shark Warriors. 
great. That force, I think my shark warriors could probably take. Uh, Masataka, why don't you research for now since you're not actually doing anything? Uh, you're summoning earth power and then lesser water elementals, I guess is the current plan. Yeah, that is the current plan. Okay. Um, instead of changing shape, I'm just going to have you spam water elementals. It will take some water gems, but that's fine. I have some water gems, so you can have four of those. And then, let's send Masataki and Shoichi to take that province, because I desperately need resources in order to keep up my shark warrior production. Down here, Sutoma is going to get all these troops. And the spearmen are going to be in a separate force. So the spearmen are going to form a sparse line right out at the front. Actually, no. They are designed to absorb arrows. Uh, yeah, actually, sparse line will be fine. They are going to attack the closest enemy. The Akaoni Samurai behind them are also going to attack the closest enemy. Speed-wise, they are 9, they are 10, so they won't be catching up. These 27 back here are going to hold and attack rear. Koichi is going to be in the middle of them, and he is going to bless twice and then cast spells. Sutoma is going to hold and then stay behind the troops. And he will be up here with the Akaoni Samurai at the start, so he isn't immediately targeted. So this army now is going to move over in this direction, and it will take this province eventually. Hirofumi is still assassinating. So I've now got my ninja into the enemy capital. And I'm just going to order him to assassinate, just to see, just to see what will happen. Now that is a very large enemy army. 130 units. Very bad. We're recruiting from here. Um, that's fine. Gonna keep doing that, but we want this army to get up as quickly as possible. Your map move is 12. Your map move is 8. So it's you guys, it's the infantry holding me back. That's okay. Tsutomo's map move is 16, but it's 8 because of his army. And I don't think even with 16 he could get through a mountain and a highland. Too bad. I might, I may well lose a Mirrodon to that huge army that is coming my way. Unfortunate, but not much I can do about it. Um, we're going to send those guys to attack there because they just took this province, which takes away my income from these two provinces. That's a serious blow. Uh, Ngai is just going to stay behind a patrol. Uh, shark warriors. Yeah, keep recruiting shark warriors. Down here, you search didn't find anything. We're going to leave these guys alone. So Masatsuna can move back. Can you get into there? See, there's no, there's like no getting into this province. You have to be here in order to get into the province by land. Uh, scouts move around. Masatsuna, just come back. I'm not going to declare a profit at this time because in order to do so, I would have to stop. I would want to declare uh, Tsutomo my profit. Tsutomu. And I don't want him to stop moving at the moment. So you keep assassinatizing. You are assassinating. You are sneaking. Which is fine. If they move in here, you can try to assassinate. I do have 25 points of province defense which might at least inflict some damage. Not much, but some. Down here, let's buff the province defense of both of these provinces to 10. There's only 7 spearmen and the commander, so 10 province defense. Well, let's kick it up to 15, actually. I have some money to burn. Might do something. Uh, Kimimichi, search for magic sites. Yofusa, search for magic sites. And research-wise, we're getting construction up. I have reached evocation level 3, which means I have fireballs, acid bolts, magma bolts, and freezing mists available. Well, freezing mists are only available to Ryujin with air magic, but they're kind of cool spells. Uh, magma bolts, on the other hand, are available to at least some of my wizards. 
yeah, if they happen to get fire, any um, Master Shugenja that gets at least one fire random can throw magma, magma bolts. Good. Okay. You are hiding. You should move up. Bark, you should move over there just to see if you can help somehow. Uh, you can stop hiding as well, as can you. You, uh, let's move across the water. Let's go see if we can get a better look at what Lemuria is doing. We're getting a pretty decent look at Raga, and I'd also like to see what Pythium is up to. And you two, let's both go up there, shall we? Okay, next turn. No magic sites, we are out of commanders here. I tried to assassinate a Galderman and lost, because a Galderman is a shape-shifting, powerful mage. Let's view the battle to see what magic that Galderman cast at me. Okay, he's casting Air Shield. He has three air and one point of blood. Good. And regeneration. Okay, so he's got his air shield up. With three points of air, I imagine he's going to hit me with a lightning bolt and kill me dead. Yep, that's what's going to happen. Yep, there it goes. Okay, well, fair enough. Uh, a battle in Naryun Sea. I won. I lost three Ictiads and two Shark Warriors in the process of taking out both the army and the province defense. I had one unit retreat. The king of both worlds, it looks like, did get away. Interestingly, this king of both worlds does not appear to have any magic. I thought the kings of both worlds had magic. There's my Ryujin. No, he has magic. He has lots of magic. He has three holy, two fire, and one in a bunch of things, plus a gem. Okay. Let's see how this went. In particular, let's see how well the Ryujin affected it. So the warriors are moving forward. Masataka has got summon earth power. He's now preparing to summon some elementals. He summoned an elemental. Water elementals, they're not terribly fast, but they have multiple attacks. And... They are kind of hard to hurt. They're unsurroundable, they have affliction resistance, and they have they take half damage from pretty much everything, and especially underwater, they have pretty high regeneration. So 20%, he'll regenerate four hit points a turn, um, in addition to being, you know, resistant to a bunch of stuff. And his attacks are not bad. They're not fantastic, but they're not bad. Basically, small water elementals like this are good meat shields. Larger water elementals are actually very, very dangerous. So the Shark Warriors are leading the charge. We've got a couple of water elementals out. He's only up to 74 fatigue, partially because of his reinvigoration. That water elemental got stabbed to death by Ictiads, but that's okay. Actually, he regenerates five hit points around, which is pretty good. Uh, my Crab General is in combat, which is fine, because Crab Generals thrive in combat with 23 protection. Uh, my Ictiads, it looks like, are fleeing, but my Shark Warriors have successfully run off the enemy. And the Ryujin just flew to the back and did some real damage, it looks like. Cool. Yeah, he got three kills by himself. And let me see, 22, 25, 27... There were 13... Eh, anyway. So we won. In Green Marshes, we also won. We did lose five of our six Akaoni and five Yamabushis, but we took the province. However, our monk retreated. So that's unfortunate. In Amiridon, the forces of Midgard attacked, not in great force, but in some force. And in particular, they attacked with griffins. They lost all their griffins, they lost about a third of their troops altogether, but their vans and their wyverns just did too much damage to handle. Wyverns have decent stats overall, a lot of hit points, and two quite dangerous attacks, including their tails, which paralyze. And then vans, of course, are, you know, vans. They're just really, really tough. Uh, you may notice they only lost one van and got 20 kills. 
Uh, they did lose both of their skin shifters, though, which is nice. Skin shifters are very dangerous units. However, this does mean that my uh, fortress is not getting built, which is really unfortunate. Battle in the Royal Green, which we won thanks to our extra province defense. Galibolus was attacked in Lemuria and, of course, died. So these are the Lemurian uh, national troops. The Shadow Tribunes, which are leaders that are spawned by Lemuria. Spectral Hastatus, which have, of course, spectral attacks and are ethereal and float. Spectral Principe, which are spectral Hastatus but better. And Spectral Velite, which are more ranged focused spectral troops. They're all very nasty. Unexpected events? Well, that's really cool. We just got a free fort. And some gems. And we completed a fortress in Scraw Point, so it's been upgraded. Great. So once again, not the greatest turn, but also not bad. Especially because we got a free fort down here. That's actually fantastic. Let's start recruiting ninjas. And troops and stuff. Um, let's get Matatsuna back here to do things. Kyofusa can go over there. The army is moving up to the fortress. And Kimimichi should do the same. Hirofumi can now attack since he's killed all of the commanders. Uh, Masuyuki. Let's move up there. Maybe try to assassinate somebody. Two units, mainly Jarls. Interesting. So I've got almost no troops left here. Let's pump the province defense, like, way, way up. Uh, as I said, lizard provinces are interesting mainly because it lets you recruit lizard shamans, which are pretty neat. Uh, let's get Tokimichi back up here because I want to fort this province. I want to kill the people in this province, so actually Zinville move over there. Now, they might try to attack and take this province back. I feel like my lizard warriors can probably take a couple of units. Let's get the Palisades going up there. Now there's 20 enemy units there. We are recruiting more sharks and we've gotten another Earth Magic Ryujin. Great. Shoichi has acquired an affliction. He has a never healing wound. Oh well. Let's go up there and take these guys out. Drop some province defense into this province. You, you may notice we get crab generals in our province defense, which is pretty sweet. And our province defense in forts consists of shrimp soldiers and, if we upgrade it high enough, shark warriors. So actually pretty effective units. This army is going to be very, very good, I think. It should be pretty good. Uh, we're recruiting troops to back it up here. Uh, let's shift towards a more Akaoni Samurai-centric strategy at this point. And instead of ninjas, we are going to recruit... Uh, we're going to have to kick out some units here. We're going to recruit Master Shugenjas. Down here, we're also recruiting Master Shugenjas. I think it is time to start taking some magic to war. So let's move them up here to join the party. Um, you also, you and you also move up there to join the party. So all four of those wizards can at least throw magma bolts. Uh, lots more scouts. Yep, you guys are already moving. You can move up there. Um, I'm honestly not spending as much time managing my scout patrols as I probably should. But, uh, that's okay. You go over there, you can go down there. I'm just kind of spreading scouts into every province, is the goal. I did lose my scout over there in Lemuria, which is unfortunate. But, I can sneak more over. And you can get over there. Okay. So, these 60 troops are probably going to come in here into Epernia, which is unfortunate, and I can't really stop it. Kyofusa actually should pull back. I don't have a good way to oppose this army directly at the moment, because I only have one army and only really one army commander available. What I should do is recruit another commander. Or two. I could recruit two Hatamotos. Let's do that. Just for the one turn. 
Uh, we only need one Hatamoto, and that will let us recruit a few more Akaonis as well to bolster our forces. I have 14 unit slots left. Uh, I can give him all the Akaoni and then give the new Hatamoto the Ashigaru, or I can split them into two independent armies. But either way, I can provide significant military resistance at this point, so that's good. So, uh, underwater, things going pretty well, getting more Ryujin. Uh, Research-wise, we've hit construction level 3, but not construction level 4, which is what we need. Although construction level 3 does provide for an interesting combination of spells. At construction level 3, I get Legions of Steel, which buffs the armor of my troops. So, mages like Chome, who has 2 Earth, can cast Summon Earth Power to increase their Earth Magic, and then they can cast Legions of Steel, which has a large area of effect. And what Legions of Steel does is add 3 protection to every unit, to every piece of armor that a unit is wearing. Uh, that doesn't sound like much, but it actually works out to be quite a bit. So, we're going to... we're tanking our research. We're going to move a total of six mages up here to join the army. And we're going to have four people spamming mag magma bolts, uh, possibly earth-powering themselves first if I get... if I have enough earth gems. And then we'll have two people casting legions of steel on the army, which means we should set up our army to wait instead of attacking immediately. You want to hold an attack, you want to hold an attack as well. And that Legions of Steel, basically, since it applies to both, it will kick their overall protection up by 3. And protection 15 to 18 is a pretty significant buff. Protection 12 to 15 is an even more significant buff. Basically what that means is their armor is going to go up above the average damage of a human opponent. Now. Legions of Steel does not help Tengu much, because Tengu only wear one piece of armor, and it's a low protection piece of armor to boot. Mm, so it's not really worth casting on the Tengu, but it is definitely worth casting on the infantry. Okay, I think that's it for this turn. Okay, uh, we were attacked in Naryun Sea. Uh, we beat the attacking force with our province defense. So they sent in a Triton commander and a whole bunch of Triton and Ictiad random units, and our province defense killed them, including our crab general single-handedly getting four kills. I don't need to view that battle. In Range of Shadow, I won with no casualties but by Ninja. In Hinafi, I actually want to view this battle. Oh, no, that's this battle here. So it's two tiny, tiny armies fighting against each other, and the only question is... Can my Yamabushi successfully take out the enemy without any blessing or anything? And especially with two points of experience, I think they probably can. Yeah, they definitely can. Double experienced Yamabushi are pretty scary. Attack 19, defense 15. They're good. So, we got Hinafi back. In Ipernia, I was attacked, and I had almost nothing in Ipernia, so they took no casualties. In Sea Stag Lake now, I won with the Shark Warriors getting, holy crap, 28 kills. Um, and only losing three. This is why Shark Warriors are good. This is why I build them. They are very, very powerful and also very, very resilient. Especially against things like Tritons, which are just kind of basic, unarmored underwater infantry, they just can't deal with Shark Warriors. So, good. And yeah, that was what I just looked at. Okay, in Hyperbochi, I got a Skull Mentor. Great. And I got some Earth Gems. Excellent, excellent, excellent. We will give the Skull Mentor to Omaru, because Omaru will never go anywhere or do anything with his life except research. And that's fine. Hirofumi can now move down here. We've got a fortress building there. Uh, I need to build a lab down here. Inaga can move down here to do some scout metazing. Now this army, it's only about 30 units. I think the main army has retreated, but that doesn't mean I want to let it get away scot-free. So what I'm going to do is 
Akahide is going to get a slightly smaller force, 31 units. I will give him some Akaoni Samurai. Actually, I'll give him more than that. I'll stop that. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's give him ten more, so he'll have a total of twenty. So, forty-seven units. Uh, he's going to have a line of spears up front, attacking. And behind them, he's going to have a line of Akaoni, attacking. And he will be up here, holding, and then staying behind the troops. He's slightly in front of the Akaoni Samurai, in order to not draw attack rear orders immediately. He's not going to have any backup. Akahide is going to attack straight into Midgard territory in order to retake the steel ovens. Meanwhile, Tsutomu and Koichi are going to go south. Now, the question is how to split up the magic users. So you are searching for magic sites. That's what you were here to do. You, you two are magma bolters. You two are legions of steel casters, and you two are also magma bolters. So, we've got you doing legions of steel. You are going to, you can't summon earth power, magma bolts is earth based. So it would actually be worth spending the gem. Yeah, summon earth power, and then... Or actually, no. No, Eagle Eyes. Don't waste the turn on Summon Earth Power. Cast Eagle Eyes to increase your precision. And then Magma Bolt it up. And you can do that. And you can do that. And you can do that. Okay, so. To divvy the mages up. I am going to send... So this is the big army. I'm sending it down here in order to destroy this army before it continues to invade. Hopefully they'll be able to catch them. Uh, although, actually, I'll tell you what. Let's send... Let me, let me change that. I'm going to send the Legions of Steel casters and two Magma Bolters with that army into Amiradon. We are going to set them up thusly. You guys should be in a line as well, actually. Chomei needs to be near the front. As does Masamichi. Uh, these two guys can actually be in the back. And I am going to take... Some of these troops. And put them in Chomei's... Care and to put them all the way in the back. This is to draw attack rear orders once again. Uh, when these guys fly away, hopefully these guys will still draw the cavalry or the vans or whatever. Uh, and they will only last one turn and then they will die, but that's fine. So we've got our magma bolters, yeah, kind of in the back center. All right, so that force is going to go this way. That force. This force will go down here to attack this army. And they will have magma, magma Bolter casters backing them up as well. And they will just be kind of in the middle here. Okay, good. And we'll have you guys back here in a box. Hold an attack closest. Alright, let's do that. Lots of research happening. Lots of scouts not moving. I'm just going to give them instructions for what province to go to and live in. Because I don't want to be moving them every single turn for the rest of forever. I don't think there are any commanders here. I think they might just be recruiting some crossbows. But there's a commander there, though. Yeah, you move over that way. Okay, so you're building a palisades. You can't build anything, so just preach for a minute. You move back with your troops. We're going to put some defense in there, just for fun. Uh, we're actually going to up the defense here to 10, just kind of to serve as a 
warning, I guess, a border. Ooh, there's Raga. Interesting. I am within two provinces of Raga's capital, and there is a province in their capital circle that they have not taken. Fascinating. Very, very poor decision making, Raga. Masatsuna is building a lab there, so soon I will be recruiting mages from that fort as well. And Kyofusa. Try going up. Yeah, go up there and find magic. Kinhide, meanwhile. Can you cast any cool ritual spells? Um, why don't you call a Kraken? Just to see how cool they are. There is a maelstrom here, which is producing water gems, and that is excellent. Uh, this army is pretty depleted, so we are going to move back. We're going to set up some province defense in this province as well, just to keep Erythnia from getting too stroppy. And we will continue to recruit as many shark warriors as we possibly can. Ideally, we'll take this province pretty quickly as well. That will boost our resources yet again. And then maybe, well, uh, no, we're out of recruitment points because shark warriors take a ton of recruitment points. Uh, if we get a whole bunch more resources, shrimp soldiers might actually start looking like a better deal because they take a third as many resource, a third as many recruitment points while taking two thirds as many resources. So, okay, everything's going fine. Let's go one more turn before we call this one quits. 16 commanders are doing nothing. What are you? Uh, wait. You can wait. You move. You can wait there. You move. Uh, you can wait there. You move. Wait. Move down there. Wait. Uh, there are commanders here, so assassinate. You, Mr. Ninja, can go up there. You, there are no enemy military units here, so you go over there. And you, go down over there. I have a couple of ninjas here. Too many ninjas. Uh, let's start getting some more magic up ins. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Ooh, we found a magic site! Finally, an enchanted windmill! Sweet! That gives me air gems! I cannot lose this province. This province is too good. Uh, then, in Amiradon, we won against province defense. We lost two Tengus, which is unfortunate, but the Tengus also did the majority of the killing. In Evergreen Forest, Midgard uh, evaded me. They attacked province defense and wiped it out. In Ipernia, my troops moved in behind them, lost some Ashigarus, but they took out the province. And my Master Shugen just got three kills. So let's see that magic in action. Everyone's moving forward. My Master Shugenjas are casting Eagle Eyes on themselves. And despite having a very, very small target, they are going to successfully get three kills in this battle, which is pretty cool. So the Magma Bolts go in and totally miss. Great first showing, guys. Good job. Love ya. More Magma Bolts going in. Um, well, it looks like they got a little bit of friendly fire, but they did hit an enemy. Uh, okay. So it looks like the score is probably 1-2 to two when it comes to enemies versus friendly fire. But you know what? I'll take it. Eh, it's, it's okay. I'll take it. Uh, epidemic dysentery is spreading in green marshes. Ew, gross. Gross. Okay, so, this army is just being a nuisance at this point. It's large, I can't necessarily stop it. My province defense certainly can't stop it. Uh, especially not with those vans. I mean, they have 15 vans. That's a serious problem. However... This army, they can't stop. So I'm going to pile my ninjas into the enemy capital here. And we're going to try to assassinate a whole bunch of folks. Hirofumi can go down there. This army, actually, on consideration, is not tough enough to take out this army. Now this army might be able to accomplish something. However, Krakens are 
underwater. Yeah, Krakens are really not too terribly impressive. I mean, they're blunt resistant. They are stealthy, which is cool. And they get a whole bunch of attacks, but their attacks are not great. Their protection is low. Their defense is low. The only thing they've really got going for them is hit points. So, eh. Eh. Now, Masayasu is pretty cool because he has air magic, which means he can buff himself very, very well. So, for example, he can cast Charge Body at l higher levels of alteration. He can cast the air buffs that make him very hard to hit. He's a good dude. And, research-wise, construction level 4 will be done in one month. So after that, we're probably going to go down alteration for a couple of levels in order to get mist form and liquid body and quickness. So we'll want alteration level four. Okay, but that is going to be it for this episode. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, we are struggling a little bit against Midgard, mainly because we just don't have good answers to some of their troops. But we will conquer. We shall overcome. Uh, they can't keep us down. We will beat them, and we will... Uh, secure this world for the glory of general confusion. So thank you all once again, and I will see you next time.